How many of you use WhatsApp? I believe most of you do. But have you heard of a story where a small WhatsApp group creation turned into a multi-million dollar company? Yes. Hi, I am Prashant Uttekar, a learning enthusiast, and you are listening to the Relearning Podcast. You know, I started this podcast to break few myths around learning and go back to basics and relearn ABCs of learning. And soon enough, I found Jitendra Choksi on a podcast, a founder of Fitter, who is doing the same thing, same myth busting for going back to basics in fitness and nutrition area. Jitendra calls himself as an accidental entrepreneur. While doing his day job, he started consulting people over a small WhatsApp group about fitness and nutrition, which went on to become a Facebook group and now an award-winning organization called as Fitter. His journey is a classic racks to riches story, literally taken off from a movie. Growing up in Pulaha, a small village in MP, to find a company which revolutionized fitness. Jitendra surely has come a long way. From personal experience, Jitendra knows how life can transform when you get fit. And now he has taken it on himself to take his mission with Fitter that he wants everyone on this planet to know what this feels like. Welcome to the show, Jitendra. Thanks a lot, Prashant. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your recent win, the Young Entrepreneur Award by Business World. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now, first things first, you know, and I was really moved with this. I saw your promo, uh, you know, uh, your shoot on on uh, YouTube, basically your life story where you were teased for being a fat kid and then societal pressures and those picky comments, you know, one makes. And, you know, while I was looking or going through that, there was one song which was uh, going through on my mind, which was Apna Time Aayega. And so uh, now when when you go back to, to that kid, uh, who who was being teased uh, while he was a kid, or you know, people would say that it's not or you won't be able to do it, or you know, what would you like to tell them? Uh, there's nothing. I think, uh, to be very honest, I would not like to change anything. Everything was supposed to happen the way it happened, and that's how it should be. Uh, you know, so I I don't even want to go back to my past. I'm enjoying every single day every single moment and I will continue doing that. You know, I'm, I'm not the kind of a guy who uh, keeps a lot of baggage. Uh, yes, there are some incidences, memories, but then you, you talk about them, but you don't, don't keep them to your heart. Just move forward and, you know, keep going forward. And I think that's the best way to live your life without any baggages, without any, uh, you know, of those uh, memories of the past, you know. I think I, I found that that's, that's the best way to live. You know, and uh, so, no, I wouldn't say anything to that kid. Uh, I would ignore that kid, let him grow up and do whatever he wants to. And it'll all turn out well for him. And that's what they say, right? Uh, all these things make you the person you are right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's extremely important. You know, everybody who's going through uh, something bad, something, uh, you know, which, which feels like, you know, why are they going through that? It's, it's all part of learning. And yeah. I think... There's, there's a good reason why all of us go through. It's a, it's a subtle way uh, where the universe tries to teach us, you know, different things. And it's up to us. How do we look at those things? Do we keep complaining about those things? Do we learn from those things? And, you know, if an opportunity presents, you know, those are exactly the things that the life has been preparing for. So it's all about preparation. You know, you can assume all that's a preparation or you can complain that, you know, shouldn't deserve that. I was uh, re- not reading. I was looking at this wonderful interview. I think it was Sadhguru or I'm, I'm not sure who was this. So he, he says a very simple thing that yes, experiences make you. You can either have excuses of what you couldn't do or you can simply pick yourself up and you can choose the pleasantness. It could be either you choose excuses and be unpleasant about it or you could choose be, to be pleasant and you know, learn from it. But sure, thank you for sharing that. Okay, in terms of relearning, what have you relearned about yourself in these transitions? What I've learned is like people make things hard or people make things harder than they usually are. Everything is pretty simple as long as you have the basic intent. It's all basic principles, you know. Uh, you know, I've always believed in being good, you know, doing good, being nice to people. And somehow when society was trying to convince me otherwise, you know, I was suffering. Uh, 
and 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 the society did try to convince me that you know aise hi hoti hai duniya aisa nahi ho sakta ye nahi kar sakte wo nahi kar sakte till the time society was telling me those things i was suffering and when i let go of those people when i let go of that section of the society right. i realized i'm much more happier and they are bullshitting you know they are just making things harder than they are in reality if if you want to achieve something just go out there and achieve it it's, it's as simple as that you know it's not 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 difficult at all my education is very average my past experience is very average i look like an average guy i still do look like an average guy but i'm saying everything about my life is very very average there's there's nothing extraordinary no special talent nothing it's just an average simple guy who is who is just trying to you know get things done every day when he's waking up it's as simple as this you, you are just extra you 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 are just very modest if you guys if 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 my listeners have not seen jitendra choksi i would simply urge you to just google him then probably you will notice you know what he is and uh, what you see on the screen by the way his his physique he's maintained throughout okay and uh, you know it's 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 amazing that he does and he's a big proponent i just saw a video uh, a post of yours uh, saying that before the uh, you know those uh, vitamins and those uh boosters that you get people were still bodybuilders in india and they were going out and performing there that was amazing no that's that's the truth you know what, what happens is people choose to ignore what people have done and they they get very comfortable uh feeling good about themselves saying it hey, those guys did it maybe maybe they can do it they are hard workers but in reality you know it's as difficult for uh them as it is for you the only difference is they believe that it's not that difficult they believe that they can achieve it uh, you are not even attempting it how are you going to achieve it the first step is uh, a visualization and then then second step is realization unless until you see yourself doing it you're not going to do it interesting so those bodybuilders who did it in 19th uh, uh, 18th and 19th century yeah uh, those were those were common guys Uh, they didn't have access to supplements they didn't have access to any sort of drugs they didn't have access to protein powders and if you look at their physique it's incredible not just that those yeah. guys paved the way for modern bodybuilders if you see ghosh and sain yeah. they wrote a book about physical back in 1930s you know back wow. in 1930s when the whole wow. world was not even aware about the concept of uh, you know drugs in bodybuilding and they wow. had such amazing physique if you talk about uh the guys like uh, you know manohar i you know he was mr universe uh, he he died at the age of one, 103 and he was still fit so point being uh, we be categorically uh, you know choose to ignore the achievements of people and label them as a freak of nature or maniacs but in reality they are common people like you and me yeah yeah that's the difference in fact so what you going i mean you you said what you relearned is stay basic Uh, don't ignore the uh, basic aspects of and and tr- just try to be just try working towards it and you've also taken up yourself on uh, picking up on sugar which is also very interesting very recent that i saw in fact there's a post that you've put out uh, look it's all about intent you know the intent where uh, you know if somebody is unnecessarily dumping sugar on indians that's that's not the right thing to do look throughout the world people are already consuming a lot of sugar i'm not saying sugar is bad but imagine consuming uh, you know 20 kilo kilograms on an average sugar right uh, every year that's a lot of sugar you're consuming more than one and a half kilograms of sugar every year that roughly translates to uh, uh, you know about about 300 grams of sugar per day right. uh, sorry 30 30 to 40 grams of sugar per day right and those are the calories which are not adding any value to your life <laughs> true those are empty calories which uh, those are those are calories which are unnecessary calories you know you can always do away with those calories and replace them with uh, foods which are uh, low energy density but have high volume so what those will do is they will keep your satiety levels high for example you can replace them with potatoes potatoes you can eat equal amount of potatoes which absolutely uh, less the calories you know one fourth of that calorie so idea is that you know we should start telling people about making smart choices about food there's no good or bad food but unnecessarily you know trying to uh, make something 
uh, you know, yeah. glorify something that sugar is going to boost your immunity and all that. That's that's just crap. Telling people that sugar is the preferred source of energy. That's crap. No, sugar is not the preferred source of energy. It's glucose. That's, exactly. that's basic biochemistry. It's glucose and glucose can be extracted from any food. It's, it's very interesting the kind of pose that you have and the kind of following you have because uh, that surely helps breaking some myths, right? Now, on the topic of breaking myths, and, and you do this so many times, you meet so many people. What are some common myths that around fitness or around nutrition, which you get perpetually that this question is asked by everyone? Right. I, I think one of the things that people, one of the biggest myths is that people can't get fit. You know, ah. a lot of people, so look, uh, in India, there's roughly 72 million diabetics, you know, right. and somehow people very comfortably ignore that they were fit once. And they got unfit. So when people become unfit from fit, nobody bats an eye. But somebody <laughs> who's unfit loses a couple of kgs and everybody starts losing their mind. They're like, yeah, yeah this is possible. Nahi hai. Ye to fake hai. This is Photoshop. <laughs> Boss, go from A to B, you can also come back from B to A, right? Because they don't understand quantification, because they don't understand energy balance. And so without understanding the basic science, then they then they look at the examples or you know all these chronic uh, YouTubers who are also snake oil peddlers and then they they come to this conclusion that you can't get fit naturally after twenty years after so that's that's one of the biggest Boy. myths. Then a lot of people are a very big proponents of uh, you know these magic uh, supplements boosters X Y Z diets and uh, all those people they, they don't understand that look you didn't get unfit because you are not following those things you got unfit because uh -huh. stress increased your eating habits uh, became bad you started smoking you started drinking so instead of like undoing those habits you are now going on uh, detox and these five day plan and six days plan like i don't understand <laughs> on what planet is that logic even uh, working like how how is that even possible uh, rather than undoing the things that uh, you right. know, created the problem in the first place, you are looking for a completely different solution altogether. <laughs> and how is that going to work? Yeah, it's like it's like basic common sense. And like you know, common sense. But it, when people say it's not so common, you know, <laughs> I, I feel right. Not a common common idea, but apparently they are right. You know, it's not that common. <laughs> you have made yourself unfit. Don't take another route. Just take a route back. Is that that yeah. that's that's the summary, right? In terms of in terms of nutrition, I I I what I've realized is you're a voracious reader also. How does that work? Because one okay, there are two f aspects to it. I know that I'm I'm categorizing it, but they go hand in hand, which is keeping fit and eating right, right? But how did that uh, relearning happen to you? Because I also read and and saw your story. Initially, the way that you started was very different than what you adapted to. So what was that relearning? So uh, look, it's, it's all about, you know, one thing is like, uh, you can always make it hard on yourself, uh -huh. right? And uh, the, the, the difference between that is like, it's not sustainable. So when, when I started out, I was assuming that I was doing a lot of hard work and I kept pushing myself, you know, with all that energy and, uh, you know, you always try to be angry at the gym, you grunt and, <laughs> you know, you, you smile and, <laughs> You know, you, you have this, you know, anger, which is, which is not really there, but you somehow manage to get it. Right. And so you are always like sacrifice this and that, you know, but a peak and drop, you know, it goes up and comes down. Uh, you have to find a place where you're just happy, you know, where, where, where you're basically not happy, where you're constant, you know, so there's no phases of this and that and that you're, you're like this. Okay. So I think uh, over the years I've figured out that, you know, it's, it's not really hard work or anything. It's just, it's just a matter of habits, you know? So just like I brush my teeth and if you tell the kid when they are small, brush the teeth, you know, first they'll be like, Oh mama, I don't want to do this. It's too hard. But over a period of time, it just becomes a habit. It becomes like their second nature. Right? Yep. So over a period of time, you know, exercising and eating right has become my second nature. So I don't crave junk people like asking me, they say, you don't eat cake. When do you cheat? Do I have to? I mean, do I really have to? I, I don't even think about these things, right? And I eat 
uh, whatever I feel like eating. I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking that this is hard work or sacrifice. It's just, I, I like eating like this. You know, I like exercising every day. Previously, when I was going to gym, there were too many distractions. The traffic on the road or, uh, you know, waking up uh, early, waiting for my partners to wake up. And ah. I used to be the I used to call them and they would always be late. So there's a lot of frustration within getting adding up even before you're going to the gym, right? You're looking forward to the gym, but there's too many distractions. But now since the lockdown happened, I built a small gym at home. There's no distractions. I can work out anytime I want. And I realized that working out makes me feel happy. It's like my, uh, it's like, you know, my happy hormones, uh, you know, just too many happy hormones. You know, my dopamine level goes up after I finish my work. <laughs> no, you bet. You said it. No, we, we are unnecessarily creating attachments, which are, which are, which, which can be easily let go. These are stupid attachments like, oh, I can't let go of my morning coffee. Those are unnecessary attachments. And the more you try to attach yourself to these things, the more difficult, like I said, leave the baggage behind. When you're moving forward, the best way to travel is travel light. You know, I like that. All these attachments and all those things behind. And that way you can move faster and you'll be. You never know, you would fly. Travel light and you'll fly. Yeah. yeah. No, very interesting analogy. And uh, thanks for sharing that. It, it surely brings a lot of insight. Very interesting. Because I, I'm, I'm a problem solver. I like solving problems more than I'm, uh, I like mixing with people. Most important, these solutions and most of them are free. Yeah. No, you're not charging any royalty on that, which is, very, which is the interesting part, right? Uh, in fact, one of my friend told me about uh, interviewing you because uh, he found the topic of myths and relearning quite similar of what you are doing and what the kind of, the kind of podcast I'm doing. And he asked me to ask you this question of this event that you do, it didn't go up, the contest that you do. And unfortunately, the pandemic has hit, right? So how are you keeping up with that? Right. Look, so that's, that's the one time, you know, uh, like, you know, so previously I said, I, I don't socialize, but that doesn't mean I don't like, uh, you know, knowing people. Uh, I actually like knowing people, so I don't unnecessarily chit chatter, but I do like knowing people, right? So uh, Goa uh, Connect was an event where the idea was that everybody who's in this digital world, uh, they will for once in their life, you know, meet other people and uh, bond with other people, exchange uh, key learnings from each other and have fun, you know, nice. because the entire year people are working hard and they are connecting with each other uh, online. And, uh, you know, they, they never really get to know who yeah. is there and right. who are these people who are sitting behind computers. So it was a good idea to bring people in one stage. Also, I wanted people to get to learn from some of the top experts uh, from all over the world. So we got a lot of amazing speakers from yeah. all over the world. The idea is to get people to learn as much as we can. You know, because like I said, you know, education is really, really a big problem. And for some reason, we have neglected education for the last couple of decades and unless until we educate our people we we make them self aware we make them uh, uh we make them uh, think for themselves it is it is not going in that right uh, right direction and so for the future of this country for the future of our kids i have a small daughter right so i'm worried about those things um i have to find a way where people can always uh, you know learn more become better versions of themselves making better citizens, making better taxpayers. So it's all, it's all related. Absolutely. Absolutely. And spot on, right? And in fact, I did a first episode of this podcast and it literally says the topic of the podcast is don't be yourself. Of course, the executive presence coach, Sitil Kakkar Mehra says, don't be yourself, be the better version of yourself. If you just look yourself from the third person, do you like it? And that, that, that's the answer, right? Now in this, in, in this, point of education I, I have seen you doing it very well and i think you've been doing it since uh, squats uh, you are in a constant area where you're talking about basics and you're educating a lot right so uh, look one is the uh, free education which is which is where uh, fitter does a great job we have about 5.8 lakh people in the main fitter group then we have fitter moms, which uh, provides a safe place for lactating uh, women, pregnant women, and women in general to discuss their health and wellness related issues. Then we have recently launched fitter kids. The idea was that look, everybody was stuck online, including my daughter, and they the, the kids need to find out uh, an avenue to you know take out all that 
extra energy, right? So previously she used to go out and she used to play with other kids, but now with the lockdown, uh, you know, kids were stuck at home. So I thought, why not create something online? Mm-hmm. The kids will look forward to doing something and make nice. it gamify, you know, because kids really love the rewards. And how can we inculcate better habits uh, by giving them some rewards, you know, like teaching, you know, giving them task of the month and if they perform, give them toys. So he thought, let's, let's build a community for kids. And what happened was that 7,000 plus people uh, joined, like parents joined. And now we have kids who are engaging in health and fitness related activities. They're enjoying it. Right. So these are some of the things which we have done. Apart from that, we also own a company called INFS, which has trained about 7,000 plus scholars. Uh, IMFS. In the area of- Nutrition and fitness sciences. That's correct. No, so nice. It offers, yeah. yeah, it offers different courses. It offers course calisthenics, sports nutrition. Uh, so they have they have trained more than seven thousand plus uh, people into uh, fitness and nutrition. Of course, no, no. Of course, I, I didn't get the word INFS, but yeah, sure, fantastic. There are there are people who are on phones who who are getting this education. There is a whole lot which do not have access to the phones. Are you making some attempts to go in that area as well? Look, that's a, that's actually a long-term plan. And uh, that was the main reason why we had started Atharvani. Uh, the, the, the first intent of Atharvani to, uh, was to like proportionate certain funds that we, that we make as a company. Some part of the profits will go establishing, you know, very, very small digital schools uh-huh. uh, in remote areas. Because uh, like I said, I'm, I'm from a very small village. Uh, where I was the only kid who got education. So even my oh. cousins and uh, rest of the family members are still in the village. Some are farmers uh, and most of the guys are not educated. So it was always a lifelong dream for me to, you know, go back and do something uh, for their kids. You know, at least they didn't get education, but their kids should. So at least they should get, uh, uh, you know, education. So the idea was that, you know, we will collect funds and we will, drive some initiators, but then the pandemic hit and we started redirecting all the first funds for supporting the migrant workers, uh, for reaching out to elderly people, supplying medical, uh-huh. so all those things. But as of today, like Federer uh, gives out about 5 lakh rupees each month and we have contributed about 65 lakh rupees for the entire uh, pandemic relief process. Uh, Interesting. Since March. Yeah. Wow, that, that's commendable. So <laughs> it's circle of life for you, right? You started from there and you're trying to give it back or probably trying to do something. Giving back would be too big a word, right? Uh, and trying to make, ensure that, you know, their kids are trying to, uh, they would benefit from some of this. So circle of life. Absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Another name that is Sunil Shetty, the strategic investor in Fitter. How did that happen? Right. Uh, so we did a, uh, we did a, you know, live show called uh, Transformation Wars back in 2017. So we did this YouTube series, uh, uh-huh. you know, Transformation Wars. And uh-huh. we sent a trailer after it was executed to Sunil Shetty's team, uh, asked them if this is something good. And so they saw it and they were very impressed. Uh, okay. And they, they, they called me. So I went there and they asked about who we are, what we are doing. And Karan, uh, who handles popcorn, he was... Uh, part of the fitter group. So he already knew something about fitter, but not a lot. Then he said, you know, JC, this is good, but you know, Anna is very impressed, but what you guys are doing, why don't you meet him and talk to him about what you're doing? Because he's also extremely passionate about fitness. Absolutely. And I've also told him like how you guys are educating. So then I met Anna and then, you know, it was more of a philosophical match because he said, look, JC, I've been in the industry for the last so many years. All I've ever wanted is people to get fit. And I've tried so many times. I've tried educating. But problem is, I have the ideas, but I don't have a team to execute it like you ah, guys have time. Nice. So I've always been looking for a team which can execute this vision of, you know, making India fit. And you guys are doing it amazingly well. So I said, you know, this is exactly what we are trying to do. So, so basically the universe aligned itself to get the guys of same bandwidth to come together. Absolutely. So, how has that strategy been? Because I'm confident that has opened certain doors for you when... You know, things have been different after that. I mean, look, you you know, he's he's not really like a like a poster boy like most of the companies how, True. how they use True. celebrities. Right? So what we do is, and what we have always done is, we we always believe that you know there's a lot which we can learn from him. 
uh, there's a lot which people can learn from him. So what we do is we still keep everything around education. So you'd see the only time he comes online is when, uh, you know, he's in talks with me or if he's yeah. coming to connect where he is directly talking to people and people can learn from him. So there's yeah. no advertisement. He's never going Absolutely. to pitch our services saying, hey guys, Twitter, and nor do we want him to do that. So you'll never see his posters on our app or always see, you know, I'm having a webinar with him. I'm having a seminar with him or even recently when we spoke at Textbox. Right? So these are the kind of initiatives that we focus on. It's all about education, uh, you know, and, and having him uh, with us. And he's 60 years, by the way, and he's amazingly fit, right? So there's a, there's a deeper connect. So when he talks, yep. people listen. And it's also about, you know, being in a very, very busy life. Like, look, it's, it's very easy for somebody who's not as busy as him to still be fit. But somebody who's as busy as him, uh, you know, it's always very difficult. So yeah. to hear what he has to say, uh, you know, is, is always going to add value to people's lives. And that's why he was also a natural fit uh, for us compared to any of the younger guys. Because uh, when you are young, things are completely different. It's easier to be fit. But once you hit that 50, 60 mark, things get exponentially difficult. You know, you're dealing with injuries, you're dealing with sarcopenia. Uh, you constantly have problems with muscle loss. And you have so many issues, but despite yeah. all those challenges, if you meet him, you'd feel like he's not a more, uh, not a day above 40. But yeah. I think this is something which a lot of us can learn from him. You know, this is who we should aspire to be. This is how fed we should aspire to be when we turn 60. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's all about, you know, keeping uh, that education out there in public domain. And every time he comes online in the fitter group or fitter page, um, it's all about, you know, learning from him, talking about fitness, talking about nutrition, talking about, yeah. you know, keeping yourself motivated. So it's all about that. Uh, also, the large segment that we cater to is, is not your average gym goer population. You know, yeah. so we recently ran a survey and we realized that about 40% people who joined Fitter either don't go to the gym uh, previously or they are unmotivated people. Uh, so our real business has has been into motivating people. So converting desire into motivation. And as we move forward, that will become a substantial part of the business. So targeting people who are falling uh, into these scams, uh, like, you know, all these durable life and sauna belts and all that crap. Uh, those would be our main target. We are hey, going to- uh, don't, don't say that. I love the ads. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So, so we are going to reach out to these people and we are telling them that it's, it's, it's much more easier than what you're doing right now. And you don't have to like, uh, go through a drastic transition. All you have to do is just, just learn. So basically educating these people who are the most gullible section of the society and probably yep. are the people who are the most desperate. Now, people who go to the gym, uh, people who have already some experience, these are the people who will find out a way one way yeah. or the other. Right. Right. But the urgent need is to reaching out to those 70 odd million people who neither have the motivation nor the knowledge. So reaching out to them is the priority right now. Very nice. And I love the consistency in your replies of your goal is to keep people fit. And the main challenge you see is that education of it. And yeah. these things are very basic. Right. Absolutely. Right. Superb. Okay, last question on this, and uh, this is probably, probably I test on this. From WhatsApp to Facebook, from Facebook to an organization which is app-based, what next? Uh, so I, I guess it's all about, look, our, our foot is education, right? And our key is the community. Now, community is basically people. And if you think about it, the whole business is around educating people. Uh, so you know, today there's mobile phones and apps. So we are an app centric business, but tomorrow if there's VR or AR or any other technology, we'll become that technology business. So for us, the technology is kind of just an enabler, but in reality, we are a community who's into educating uh, people and the mediums will continue to change. So as and when the mediums change, we will adapt. But one thing that will never change is that it's a community which is engaged in learning and educating people around fitness. Does Super. that make sense? We go to the next section, which is the rapid fire round. I hope these are some questions which are beyond fitness and beyond the areas that you have. So it, 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 it could be uh, 
different questions than what I have asked so far, but but try to be rapid. What is the strangest thing that have happened to you or asked by a client in an interaction in a community or with a client? Strangest, I weirdest. People come up with very very strange questions. Trust me, and there's not one question which will qualify as the strangest because it's it's, it's almost like a daily thing. So okay. Uh, you know, from whether masturbation will affect my muscle growth. Uh, oh. Make me blind. All those kind of questions. <laughs> masturbation will make you blind. Yeah. Uh, if there is a time machine, which era would you go and why? No, I, I, I'd stay here. This is the most beautiful day today. Today is the most beautiful day. And tomorrow is going to be the most beautiful day. So I don't want to go anywhere. This is, this is where I would like to be. Okay, and, fantastic. And change anything. Like people have these fantasies about going back someplace, having money, choosing between muscles and money and this and that. I'm, 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 good. I'm good. There is no tomorrow. That's the truth. Yeah. Everything amazing is right there in this right moment. now. That's it. Fantastic. Right Fantastic. I like that answer. So your question is, what is your recommendation for a podcast, movie or a book? Look, uh, so there's one podcast which I would uh, uh, recommend everybody, the Philosophy Podcast. Uh, you know, so it's an amazing, amazing podcast. It taught me a lot about uh, humanity. It taught me a lot about uh, different philosophers who lived. And it's, it's just amazing, you know, it, it gives you yep. an insight into how society has evolved, uh, how everything has evolved over a period of time, completely separate from science. You know, so it's all about logic, reasoning, it's all about how the thought process uh, has evolved. And it's a, I'll give you the name. So it's a philosophize this by uh, Stephen West. Okay, it's, it's, it's very underrated podcast. Nobody uh -huh. knows about this. Uh, but they have over 100 plus episodes and I've listened to every single of that episode. And it's just beautiful. Like, it's, it's amazing. The best podcast in the world. Really? Uh, okay, my, nice. Wow. In my Very, very underrated. But it's just amazing. It's like reading a thousand books in every single podcast. That's, wow. That's amazing. Fantastic. That's, I, I'm, I'm surely going to check that out. Uh, do you watch series, movie recommendation or a book? Oh, I watch, I watch a lot. I, I'm like a movie fanatic. So there's not a movie, uh, which I haven't watched. Really? Uh, especially, I think I'd, I'd, I'd recommend, uh, you know, you watch October Sky. I, I think October Sky is there. Beautiful Mind is there. Uh, and, uh, and, and more recent movies. Uh, uh, there's the, uh, there's Time Crimes. Pretty interesting movie. It's a, it's not a, it's not a, uh, Hollywood movie. It's a European movie, Time Crimes. No? It's, a, it's a very good movie. Then Predestination is pretty good. Uh, if you, and then The Man Who Walked the Earth, it's, it's a pretty good movie. So many movies. <laughs> I can give good. you like 100. Good recommendation. Right. The Man from the Universe. The Man from? The Man from uh, Earth. The Man from Earth. The Man Who Walked the Earth or Man from Earth. Yeah. The guy who literally is Jesus, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very few people know about that movie. It's a, it's a good movie. It's pretty interesting. So good. <laughs> no, that, that, these are good recommendations. Tumbar is the most favorite uh, one which I've watched. Tumbar is just amazing. I think that movie deserves uh, an Oscar. Uh, at least, you know, eight to nine. Have you seen amazing, amazing movie? Have you seen Kumbhini Nights? Uh, sorry, which one? Kumbhini Nights. Again, this is my recommendation. You love the scenic beauty. And if you love Tumbad, you'll like this. Any book that you recommend beyond yours, which is Get Shredded? Uh, okay, so I'm not a book buff. I'm going to be honest. I do have a library, but I've not read a single book completely ever. Uh, but I have read uh, one book, which is Zero to One, which is pretty good. Hmm. But like, I, I don't like latching onto people's philosophies other than uh, the ones I already follow, like Mahatma Gandhi and Gautam Buddha. These are the guys who are my go-to for big problems. Small problems, I, I, I try to find my way around things. So, so I also don't want to, you know, uh, learn some things uh, which will be hard to unlearn. So entrepreneurship is something which I believe is it does not follow a, a, a 
particular way. Right? So that's why I categorically don't read books on entrepreneurship. And some things which I want to figure out for myself and probably tell people that, you know, this is not how it is. So I categorically stay away from uh, books. I, I try to assimilate knowledge from different sources, mm. but just not really book, book. I mean, sorry, book, book, you know. No, fair enough. Uh, and I think, oh, we, we have crossed the time as well. Thank you so much for doing this, Jitendra. I was really happy that you accepted uh, to talk to me and uh, give a little insight about your life and fitter. Uh, thank you so much for doing this and it's 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 super e-learning for me and the listeners as well thanks a lot for having me here i'm, I'm glad we could do this yeah thank you. cheers